James Harden, my brother, you got to grow up. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. To our regular viewers, thank you very much. We really appreciate the support. To our new viewers, welcome. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Our target is a thousand likes. So come on, let's hit the like button. So the James Harden situation appears to have accelerated towards disaster this week as he did not appear for practice on Wednesday and apparently he has been in Houston for the past few days. The thing is there has been no communication from Harden's camp to the Philadelphia 76ers as to why he has gone rogue. So ESPN First Take brought Brian Windhorst onto the show to chat about the Sixers situation. Then Stephen Smith decided to make a lengthy monologue telling James Harden to grow up. It's obviously impossible to disagree because you're watching a grown man throw a tantrum to get what he wants. But on the other hand, to be realistic, James Harden knows what's best for James Harden. What we see from our point of view is him trying to force his way out. I know some think that he doesn't want to win anymore and it's all about money for him. Personally, I think that's not true because we saw what happened to Kawhi Leonard some years ago. He forced his way out of the spurs because his relationship with the organization was already broken and he went to the Raptors and won. The Philadelphia 76ers are the ones making a mistake because James Harden has already made it clear that he doesn't want nothing to do with them anymore. My point is they should have traded James Harden by now because it's affecting the team. Okay, now let's listen to Stephen Smith. There's two sides here. One is the James Harden side. One is the Daryl Morey side. Neither issue can be avoided. Let's deal with James Harden first. James Harden, my brother, you got to grow up. You're 34 years old now. You're a professional. You've been on three teams since January of 2021. Houston Rockets, Brooklyn Nets, now the Philadelphia 76ers. You forced your way out of the previous two. Now you're trying to force your way out of a third, which you'll likely succeed. Of course, Wendy, I know you've heard this because you know I've heard this. The Philadelphia 76ers were looking for a guy like Terrence Mann along with an additional first-round pick, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Clippers weren't biting on that. They're not interested in giving up a first-round pick. Who knows whether or not something will be able to be worked out. But the reality is, is that that's probably why James Harden took the position that he took uh, because he was trying to facilitate a trade, and then once that fell through, once again he became, he became a bit petulant, and that is the position that he's taken. James Harden is not what he used to be, but he's still an all-star caliber player. Only him and Russell Westbrook, the only two players that have led the league both in scoring at one point and assist at one point. Five of the last six years, the leading scorer in the NBA has been either James Harden or his teammate Joel Embiid. But what I would say to James Harden, and I'll get into Daryl Morey in defense of James Harden in just a second. I'll get to, but in, in dealing with James Harden, my brother, you're a member of a team. I understand you're saying that Daryl Morey lied to you. And again, I will deal with that in a second. What about Joel Embiid? What about Tobias Harris? What about Tyrese Maxey? What about all of those people associated with the Philadelphia 76ers who didn't lie to you, bro? What about them? You just going to leave them hanging like that? You just going to act up the way that you acting up? Come on, man. You got to stop that. Okay, at some point in time, somebody's got to tell James Harden, you can't do that. I know that you feel like you were lied to. Damn it, you probably were lied to. But you can't do this this way. Not for a third consecutive time because now the word is out about you. That's why Miami didn't want to talk to you. Miami don't trust you because they're like, yo, why would we do that? Why would we bring him here? So I can't imagine somebody demanding themselves out of South Beach personally, Wendy. I can't see that happen. Why wouldn't anybody want to leave South Beach? I mean, that's just sacrilegious. I know you feel mind. that way. You understand what I'm saying? That's just sacrilegious in my mind. But with James Harden, they're probably saying, who the hell knows? Now let me get to his defense. I understand that James Harden emphatically has stated, and put Wendy up on the split screen, please, because I want to look at my brother while I'm talking to him. James Harden swears he was lied to. If you're Daryl Morey, who I have not called yet, but I will, and I'll talk to him. Here's the deal, Daryl Morey. James Harden ain't the only dude that felt lied to by you. Now, Daryl Morey is known as a dude, two things, and tell me if I'm wrong, Wendy. He's known as a dude that caters significantly to his star player. You know, he ingratiates himself with a star player. Sometimes 
while alienating lesser players. He's had that reputation. But here's where it gets a, a bit dicey. He also can't stand confrontation. So when James Harden went out and said publicly that he was lied to, from what I'm told, he called Daryl Morey, his, his man. That's the dude that's looked out for him, that's hovered over this Houston Rockets franchise for the entire nine years or so that James Harden was there. He did everything but gave him a manicure and a pedicure personally, and I'm not sure Daryl Morey didn't do that. That's how much he kissed James Harden's you-know-what, okay? For all of those years, and when James Harden went to Brooklyn, it was because Tillman Fertitta and the Rockets wasn't about to let him go to Philadelphia because Daryl Morey had left them like a thief in the night and ended up running the 76ers organization, and they were like, there's no way in hell that we're going to let James Harden follow you to Philadelphia. So they weren't willing to do a deal, and that's how he ended up having to go to Brooklyn because they refused to make a deal with Philly with Daryl Morey's Philadelphia 76ers. So they had to wait in order to make that happen. With that being said, knowing that Daryl Morey has done all that he has done, there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it and say, yo, man, the man looked out for you for years, James Harden. He can't have it all all the time. Or you can look at it the way James Harden is looking at it and the way I'm looking at it and the way, Wendy, I think you would look at it. If we have a personal relationship, what you go ghost on me for? How you going to ghost me? If I call, you call me back. If I call, you answer the phone. If I call, you talk to me. The fact that you're avoiding me is where the real offense comes in. That is what James Harden is having a problem with from what I'm told. It's the fact that he was ghosted by Daryl Morey. And the fact that Daryl Morey went that route was so offensive to James Harden. There's no point of return. I support James Harden on that. If that is true, Daryl Morey, you got to get some guts. You got to man up. You got to take that damn phone call. You got to look him in the face man to man. And if you sat up there and guaranteed him, because he guaranteed them the max. But Daryl Morey, according to sources, was a bit tricky. He said max dollars as in the maximum salary starting at that year where James Harden thought he was going to give me max dollars, meaning the money and the years. And he was slick with it. And when he called Daryl Morey to get an explanation for that, he couldn't find Daryl Morey. That is offensive. Right. And based off of that, I don't blame James Harden for being ticked off. But that doesn't mean you act the way that he's acting towards the rest of his teammate. I got to tell you guys, Stephen A., he got me. He got me. When he came out on Friday, last Friday, it was the first time he talked really since he was in China, which wasn't taking questions. Right. And he looked at everybody with a straight face and said, I'm ramping up. I'm going to play in the first preseason game next Friday. That's this Friday against the Hawks. Be ready to go for the opener. I was like, wow, he's actually going to play. I can't believe it because I got to tell you, based on the way the mood was after he picked up that contract option, and I know it's counterintuitive, but in today's day and age, when a star player picks up a one-year option, it means he wants to get traded. When he picked up that contract option, I thought, we're never seeing him in red, white, and blue again. Next time we see him in Philadelphia, he'll be in a visiting uniform and I'll have to deal with those fans. So I was mildly surprised when he showed up at training camp after a two-day holdout, which I've rarely ever seen a two-day holdout. I guess he had a three-day holdout when he was with the Rockets. And then, like Stephen A., all the, the words coming out of training camp was that he was in good shape and that he was, he was being a model citizen and that there was no indication of undercutting the team because they were all bracing themselves for it, right? Because it was like, okay, Harden's going to come in and raise hell. And he got me because and I think it wasn't just me, Stephen A. I think he got the Sixers too because I think, based on what I was told, they thought he was going to show up at practice yesterday. They had a long practice schedule. They played Monday in Brooklyn. He missed that game. They had a long practice schedule. It was going to be a nice, long, exciting practice Ramp up. Embiid was there. Embiid was out on Monday, took Tuesday off. Embiid was ready to go. And then we see he shows the cards. Now he's done. So now, Stephen A., I now am back to believing we will never see him in red, white, and blue again. And he's, he's bunkered down. And I don't blame him for this because this is what he did in Houston when he wanted to go to Brooklyn. He got his way. It's what he did in Brooklyn. He basically stopped playing. It was a West Coast trip. He basically quit playing on that trip got to Philadelphia, and he's doing it again. So why wouldn't he? This script has worked before, and now I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that whole two weeks with the Sixers was just a charade to mess with them. 
I don't know, but if he did do that, my compliments to him on that too because he actually had the Sixers convinced he was going to play. What do you think about this? Please drop a comment. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thank you.